Welcome to Money Talks, a series of interviews with me, Liam Halligan, Economics and Business Editor of GB News. In this episode, I talk to Spencer Matthews, a former reality TV star and founder of Clean Co., which uses traditional distilling methods to create non-alcoholic spirits, including rum, tequila and gin. As the low and no alcohol drink sector continues to grow, Matthews has raised millions of pounds for his startup. Clinko bills itself as having cheeky luxe positioning, at the forefront of what this former Made in Chelsea personality calls a clean drinking revolution. So Spencer, here we are. You're the man who's selling non-alcoholic, we've got non-alcoholic tequila here, gin, flavoured gin, I think that's a rhubarb one, and then non-alcoholic rum as well. We need to start this interview, and I'm a very serious journalist, as you know. I think we need to taste a non-alcoholic gin and tonic. Do you want to do the honours? Absolutely. So the ice goes in as normal. Yeah, I mean, the idea is that the ritual is exactly the same right, yeah. as having a gin and tonic. That's right. It's, it's supposed I'm to fill... I'm relaxed already. Well, good. That's the, <laughs> it, it's, it's supposed to fill that gap between, you know, desire and compromise. Very, you, know, you fancy a gin and tonic, but you're having a clean gin and tonic instead. Very distinctive bottle, a kind of Art Deco vibe going on there. Thank you very much. Here, let me do the honours. So when you crack it, you should, you should smell, you know... Orris root, juniper, citrus. That smells of gin. Well, good. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, sh- it, sh- it should really kind of, the whole experience right. should feel like you're having an alcoholic Because having a drink, it isn't just about the drink, is it? It's about the ritual. And I- it's about the mixers. And we've got some nice tonic here. Absolutely. So, well, I can tell you from experience, someone who used to love uh, a gin and tonic probably a bit too much, you know, is this, this for me now does the trick. You know, I get everything from a clean gin and tonic that I, that I would from a gin and tonic. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, that tastes good. It hasn't got it hasn't got the real kick of yeah. the alcohol, but it definitely tastes like a gin and tonic. Yeah, it's kind of like it's designed, well Clean G's designed uh, to trigger the kind of, you know, senses of enjoying a gin and tonic. Yeah. You know, it's it's something to elevate your your soft drink or your tonic water. You know, back when uh, I changed my relationship with alcohol, I just noticed that there was a real gap a real void in in that gin and tonic moment that yeah. you described yeah. you know just putting your feet up at the end of the long day right i'm gonna have a gin and tonic and i'm or, getting i'm getting all the aftertaste of a, of a gin and tonic as well it should feel a bit dry on yeah. your palate as well you know it, sh- it should you know and i don't think anyone's quite there yet you know when you can have the clean g you know and and it be exactly the same as an alcoholic gin although you know we have done blind consumer taste tests and a lot of people struggle to tell the difference um, but, you know, if you're a big gin drinker and you love gin, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that anyone in this space is quite there yet. So you've launched this company. I think you launched in 2019. You've been going for a while. Obviously, during lockdown, a lot of us did drink a bit more. Maybe some of us moved away from alcohol to non-alcoholic drinks. Tell me about why you did this. Did you feel that alcohol was getting too much for you? You didn't want to drink as much as you were? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I feel, you know, I created Cleanco out of a desire to to fill a gap in my life. You know, when I went sober um, and that was just before uh, the birth of our first child, uh, I just wanted to assess, you know, my relationship with alcohol, which over the years has been uh, a bit tempestuous, a bit turbulent. You know, I was, I was, you know, a a pretty heavy drinker. It was quite ordinary for me you know, to be drinking with work. I was a city trader, you know, very social job. Uh, then I worked in nightlife, you know, very social job. And then, uh, you know, I, was a, I became a television personality, which also involved, uh, you know, holding a drink a fair amount of the time. And although I never kind of saw it as deeply problematic then, um, around, you know, the time when your natural level of responsibility increases and, you know, you're about to become a father and perhaps... Mm, reassess. Um, yeah, just reassess, you know, certain bits and bobs. But you're not on some kind of temperance mission here you're not saying people shouldn't drink you're saying that if you do drink if you like a drink or if you did like a drink but now you don't drink all those different categories this could be an interesting and useful part of your life so you don't drink as much alcohol as you did absolutely like the main the main market is for moderation you know it's this is a way of, of enjoying yourself more in many cases you know we are we target uh, or, in fact, you know, our, our primary consumer, sorry. It's grown pri- on me. Yeah, well, it, it, does, it does actually get better if you, if you leave it. Yeah, our, our primary, um, you know, person who buys this is somebody who, who, who mixes cocktails at home, who loves yeah. alcohol, but, you know, maybe 
pregnant, driving, yeah. more health and conscious. And maybe not on a Tuesday night, save it yeah, for the maybe, Thursday or Friday. Maybe they've got an early morning Zoom call yeah. and you know, you've had a couple of gin and tonics and you don't want to push it that bit further. Yeah. You know, I, I think the market for abstinence, for total abstinence, uh, is relatively small compared to the market for moderation. Very well put. So Spencer, tell us about the journey. I mean, you were sitting there, you had an idea. Lots of people have ideas. It's all about execution, isn't it? It's all about putting them into practice. How difficult was that journey from conception to reality? I, I, I get, when I, when I feel a kind of lightning moment, I suppose, I, I get pretty stuck in. So, you know, I'd been sober for, for three or four months. I was at a dinner party and, and somebody uh, uh, asked me whether or not I wanted a, a non-alcoholic gin and tonic. And I, I'd, I'd, I'd never heard of that. Uh, no, no, I was like, what have I been drinking for the last three or four months? You know, and I, I suddenly thought to myself, I, I became really enthralled with the idea. Uh, it was a different well-known brand. It was the only brand at the time. Um, and I found that it, it, it was kind of quite complicated. It was quite an expensive proposition too. You know, and I became quite enthralled with the idea of, of really driving home flavor and the, and the experience you know, that the you look for. The texture on the yeah, palate. That you look for when you have a That's gin and tonic. That's what's impressing me, the texture of it. Not, not something else though. You know, so th these particular liquids were made with uh, botanicals and, and, and ingredients that you wouldn't find in gin. Mm. And I thought, why not just make a non-alcoholic gin? You know, mm. so, I, so I really went down the road of uh, you know, traveling around to different distilleries. I flew to Cork and I was trying to find a partner uh, who, who you know, would want to embark on the mission of creating, well, the world's best non-alcoholic gin, I suppose. That was where it started. And then it quickly became a play to be across, you know, a, a different portfolio across all major spirits. And, uh, and here, here we are with, yeah. with a few. We've got a whiskey coming out as well. It's, wow. The whiskey's fantastic. Again, tequila, gin, rhubarb yeah. gin and rum. Yeah, we have a vodka as well. Although, of course, uh, vodka without ethanol, uh, so it, it can be uh, quite bland. So it's a spiced apple vodka. Okay, interesting. So where is this gin distilled, I guess? Do you still use the word distilled, even though you're not producing alcohol? Yeah, we, we, we have moved kind of from distillation to blending. Okay. So, 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 so I would say that blending was a more important process uh, to us than distilling itself. When we first started, and I see us as kind of pioneers in the non-alcoholic world, I suppose. When we first started, we had no competition really to speak of apart from this one brand that was quite different to us. Uh, and we tried to just distill product, you know, all, all together in a copper pot still. I'm sure you're familiar with how gin's made, mm. but essentially you, you, you boil up uh, botanicals, which are ingredients, herbs, uh, with natural gra neutral grain spirit, sorry, uh, ethanol essentially. And that creates a really dense, um, uh, high alcohol liquid, which is then cut with ethanol or water, depending on the brand. Um, doing these drinks that way is really hard without the ethanol. Obviously, you're left with a um, uh, product which would be unsuitable, I think, to sell as a premium non-alcoholic product. So what we do now is we focus really on uh, withdrawing uh, and drawing from botanicals, just flavor, using all kinds of different technologies, and then we blend these flavors together um, and to, where to create does that the happen? product. Ben, so where, where does that manufacturing process happen? So we work with two facilities. One's just outside of Bristol and one's just outside of Leeds. But, uh, Very interesting. So you didn't go with the Irish in the end? Not, not, not in the end, no. Maybe had, in the future. We had some problems surrounding IP. Uh, yeah. uh, intellectual property. Okay. Absolutely. Very, no, very but, interesting. You're selling something that people haven't really heard of. Yeah. And yet, clearly, you seem to have broken through. It can't have just been your natural... Natural charm. No, well, well. I'm sure that was important. I'm sure. I'm sure. God, this what? is taking effect. You sure there's no alcohol yeah. in this? <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you there isn't. And it tastes good, Spencer Matthews. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thanks a lot for listening to Money Talks with me, Liam Halligan, economics and business editor of GB News. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you're listening. Do subscribe to this podcast and also check out my daily television show, On The Money, at 1pm Monday to Friday on GB News or via the GB News app. GB News, Britain's news channel.